This Ag Update brought to you by American Implement, dedicated to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, a check of Ag News. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Well, the Senate Ag Committee passed legislation supporting agro-biodefense. Committee Chairman is Kansas Senator Pat Roberts. He says the legislation means that we're one step closer to securing a more robust defense of the nation's agriculture and food supply. The National Bio and Agri-Defense Facility Act of 2019 would authorize the Ag Secretary to use the facility as a national security laboratory protecting agriculture and food. This bill directs MBAF to carry out the relevant objectives of the Homeland Security Presidential Directive and the National Biodefense Strategy, those are both aimed at securing the nation's food and agriculture. The $1.25 billion facility is being built in Manhattan and is expected to be operational by the year 2022-2023. The bill also outlines the national security mission of the facility and the duties of the agencies responsible for implementing that mission. More after this. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division, where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three-phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all-new, all-aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy-to-load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the West location, you'll find bumper pulls, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the and. Well, Senator Cory Booker has introduced legislation to phase out concentrated animal feeding operations known as CAFOs, and we know a lot of them like feedlots. The New Jersey Democrat says the Farm System Reform Act of 2019 would place an immediate moratorium on new and expanding large CAFOs and phase out by 2040 the largest CAFOs as defined by the Environmental Protection Agency. The legislation would also restore mandatory country of origin labeling requirements for beef and pork and then expand to dairy products as well. And it would prohibit the USDA from labeling foreign imported meat products as a product of the USA. Booker he labels CAFOs as large factory farms and claims the operations are harmful to rural communities, public health, and the environment. He said we must immediately begin to transition to a more sustainable and humane system. Now, Politico notes in this story that Booker is a vegan and said he does really interested in telling Americans what to eat. But this proposed sweeping reform to the U.S. food system, well, it's routine for the senator. And a quarterly report to the Farm Credit Administration is suggesting commodity prices will mostly remain low next year. This report cites large global supplies of crops in storage, saying that it will limit 
an attractive price opportunity for U.S. farmers. Now, for the next three years, soybean prices projected at roughly $8.50 a bushel, corn $3.70 a bushel. The report says the livestock and dairy returns likely to be on the positive side early in 2020, but trade risks remain elevated. Meanwhile, the report says that while it's been a difficult year in 2019 for farmers and ranchers as they've faced trade disruptions, weather extremes, as well as low prices, crop insurance indemnities, farm programs, and market facilitation program payments continue to provide financial support to the farm economy. The report says that farm financial conditions may become more of a challenge next year without some stronger markets or more aid payments. That's an Ag News update. You can stay up to date by keeping your radio tuned to 1030 KBUF for Ag News and market information throughout the day. You can like us on Facebook as well and follow us on Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. Day and night till the job is done. Teeter is the one that works for you. Fields of green. Reaching toward the sun, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter is the one, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter Irrigation, your source for water management. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future.